This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. I grew up in a country where watching foreign language films is common practice. East Asian countries often import movies from each other, so you think I'll be used to watching them. Yet, I don't, and I do this for a living. If you find it difficult to push yourself into the world of foreign cinema, you are not alone. There are the inconveniences, subtitles, cultural barriers, or just finding the movies in the first place. But there are also the pressure. Foreign film comes with prestige. Usually, it's the art house films that go international, which makes it a hard sell. Not everyone enjoys the seven seal, you know. But the worst part is the isolation. No one else shares your interests. Often, you can only watch these movies alone and have no one to talk to afterward. But it is worth it. In two more months, this channel will enter its fifth year. I watched so many movies for this channel, including some of the wildest things I've ever seen, and not once did I regret it. Each film teaches me a little bit about the world. Each movie widens my horizon. It's a worthwhile journey for everyone. So I want to take this opportunity to share my experience with you and talk about how you can ease yourself into the world of foreign cinema and the reasons you should watch them. I'll be showing movies that I personally recommend with their names on the bottom left. If anything catches your attention, you can consider it a movie recommendation from me. Without further ado, let's get started. If you are a cinephile, you already know the major foreign films: Akira Kurosawa, Wong Kar Wai, Bong Joon Ho, etc. While their works are definitely amazing, it's also kind of a bad way to get started. The vast majority of the Chinese friends I know have never seen a Wong Kar Wai movie in their life. Our films are just not mainstream, even within the country of origin. Watching only Wong Kar Wai is like watching only Citizen Kane and The Godfather. They are hardly the totality of American cinema. To see how movies shape culture, you also have to watch the Marvel movies, watch Star Wars, because these are the films of everyday people. This is why I often talk about mainstream movies, even though I approach them like I have a degree in liberal art. Without the artistic prestige, the barrier of entry is also lower. So here are some ways you can get started. Taking for movies as an example, the works of Jackie Chan are always approachable. Start from the English-speaking ones. Work your way to the golden age, and then back to his early days, or expand into other kung fu films. Oh, look! It's the actor from Kill Bill, twice. Soon enough, you start picking up patterns, and things aren't so intimidating anymore. The same goes for the Godzilla series and Ghibli animations. You can also look through the filmography of a foreign director, especially the ones that made it to Hollywood. The man who made Pacific Rim also made this masterpiece. Enjoy RRR, work your way back, and you'll find some crazy stuff. Remakes and adaptations are also a good entry. They are, of course, the prestigious ones, but the best ones are the ones that pissed off fans. Since it has a lot of fans, chances are you are going to find a marvelous movie from the source. Finally, if you heard any foreign films or saw one when browsing a streaming service, check Wikipedia for awards. Unlike the Oscar, which many believe have lost its mainstream relevance. Most national film awards are still a good indication on the film's mainstream impact. Ip Man won the Hong Kong Film Award, and as time has told, it had a big impact on the Chinese film industry. If a film has awards to it, chances are it has at least some impact on local culture. But hey, if you are already familiar with everything I said, why not start recommending films to others? If you are thinking of starting a blog. Consider using Squarespace to make your own website, because unlike social media, you are in charge of how you want to present everything. Want to highlight a movie of the month? Put it on the front page. You can even display the trailer or any other video for that matter directly on your blog. You are in control of your own content. And yes, I really do mean your own content. Everything you upload it is yours and yours alone. Squarespace even has the option for quickly exporting and importing your website. Start your free trial at squarespace.com/accentcinema and use the code accentcinema to get 10% off your first purchase. Registration is simple and requires no commitment. Everything is accessible during the trial, completely risk-free. Go to squarespace.com/accentcinema and try it out right now. 
Now we have the how. Let's talk about the why. Why should we watch foreign films? Years ago, when watching every frame of painting on YouTube, Tony Jo compared a scene from Infernal Affair to its Hollywood remake, The Departed. At the time, I thought the implication is that The Departed is better because its use of silence is more reserved and more intense. Now, Tony didn't actually say that. Rather, it was my Western educated bias at play. It feels better only to someone who's accustomed to Hollywood films. As I grew to know Hong Kong movies more intimately, I realized if you play this scene without music, it would feel incredibly weird to a Hong Kong audience. That's just not the Hong Kong aesthetic. Watching foreign films challenges my own bias. I learned to see the different ways people express themselves and realize the Hollywood way is not the default. I watched Your Name, a movie that prioritizes mood over story, and it feels unique like no others. I watched DDLJ, and I enjoyed it not for its cliché story, but for its heightened emotions. I watched The Iron Ladies, Happy Together, A Fantastic Woman. I see how LGBT plus people are treated differently around the world and realize the only constant is that we are all humans. I watch a filmmaker overcoming unimaginable limitations, making a movie in a slum, editing it with nothing but an old computer salvaged from dumpsters. I witness Nigerian cinema rose from the ashes, beginning with nothing more than a stack of piratable DVDs and a lot of passion. When astronauts see the Earth from outer space, there's often a shift in their perception. To the astronauts, national borders and cultural divides become insignificant. It's called the overview effect. That's how I feel when I watch movies from around the world. I realize cinema means different things to different people. I saw those articles about how cinema is dying because of the pandemic, or streaming, or TV series. And I just look at this video of people cheering to the trailer of RRR and laugh. Cinema isn't dying. Hollywood maybe, but cinema is a lot more than that. And that leads us to the thing that I really want to talk about, the cinematic overview effect. With it, the world doesn't get bigger, it gets smaller. It makes me realize just how interconnected people truly are. I see how American silent films influence Hong Kong cinema, which in turn influence American cinema down the line. I see breathtakingly beautiful moments built on the works of Wong Kar Wai. I see traces of Akira in the work of Jordan Peele. It's that moment when you realize Stephen Chow's $60 million man came out just one year after The Mask. It's nice to realize that the world is so interconnected, no one is truly successful on their own. But the most reassuring thing is, all of the movies listed today are made with the intent of searching for some universal truths. Love, redemption, justice, peace. A story about the wealth disparity of South Korea still rings true across the Atlantic Ocean. A movie fighting for women's rights in India carries the same weight when watched by a Chinese audience. A film about two gay cowboys falling in love is made by a director from Taiwan. Regardless of our cultural upbringing, we all seek the same thing from the same media. Our difference really is skin deep. In four years, I made almost a hundred videos talk about many films from many different corners of the world. It's kind of crazy when you stop and look. Yes, this is secretly a celebration video. Because of you, my life has changed for the better. I've learned so much in this journey. In this video's intro, I mentioned the isolation that comes with watching foreign films, and it is perhaps the most difficult part of it. You are the reason I'm not alone. With you here, I have someone to share my passions with. It makes watching foreign films so much more fun. I hope this channel does the same for you. I hope I make your journey a little bit less lonely. So, thank you for the amazing four years. I'll see you next time with more movies you may or may not have heard of.